Hi, everyone. Thank you very much uh, for joining our session for tonight, which is all about the search engine optimization for e-commerce site. My name is Jana Toral. And of course, if you have questions at any point, all you need to do is press that raise your hand button or type your questions using the questions box. Um, our agenda for tonight, okay, our topic is covered in four, we will be tackling four areas. No, First is the buyer search intentions. And then we'll talk about keyword research and verification, site optimization, and search advertising options. Um, we did not move so much into introductions anymore because uh, for the lack of time. Pero technically, when we talk about search engine optimization, it, it is all about making sure that your website will appear in Google search results. Your products and services, as you plug them into your website, you want to make sure that they would appear in search engine results and if possible, rank in search engine results. No, We'll talk about site optimization and search advertising options. And then after the lecture, of course, you can ask questions. And then um, you can also ask your questions by using the questions box and type them directly or press that raise your hand button and I will unmute your microphone. And then if you want to show us your websites later and get some advice on how to go about your website, uh, let us know as well uh, so that we can give you practical tips on how to improve your website and uh, in the best way possible. And of course, to our participants who would like to add and give their inputs to the discussion, uh, you're more than welcome as well. We try to make the presentations tonight as, um, as easily understood for an MSME because we understand that MSMEs are not technical people to begin with. So we're making the presentation also as friendly as possible, okay? Now, when we talk about um, doing uh, search engine optimization or improving our website, we have to take into consideration what we refer to as the buyer's journey. And more often than not, this often gets ignored. No? When we talk about the buyer's journey, we have to be sensitive as to what the users go through when they search for information online. Uh, usually, um, when we market online or when we promote our products and services online, I always say that 80 to 90% of the time, the person is not even ready to purchase anything from you. But by the time that hopefully they would realize that they have a need for a product or service that is within your category, you want to make sure that when they search for information, when they search for information online or when they try to validate something that they saw online that is related to the product or category that you are marketing, you are appearing in search engine results. Otherwise, your offerings on social media will not appear to be credible if they do not appear in search engine results. Pag, pag nagmamarket ka sa social media at hindi ka nakikita online, pag ginugaw search ka, buka kang fly by night. No? Yung parang, uh, I pardon the term, no? kasi syempre, if you're really serious in what you're selling online, then you must be searchable. If you're not searchable, then there's no way to validate whatever claims you're making via social media if what you're offering cannot be seen on Google. No? So when the buyer uh, goes through the stage of uh, trying to find solutions to their needs or concerns, they usually go through three stages. The awareness is where the buyer is unaware of their problem or their solution. They don't know that you exist yet, uh, but they know that they need something. No, uh, Maybe uh, they're looking for a solution. For example, if I want to go to Baguio, if I can't go to Baguio today, but I want to buy uh, Ubi Jam or Ubi Yam from Baguio, most likely I'm going to go on Google and look for um, where can I buy um, Ubi Jam from Baguio. It does not necessarily have to be from Baguio or have to come all the way from Baguio, but find stores in the country or in the area where I can purchase it. No? So that's one way of uh, doing it. If I am in Cebu and I still want to buy an ube yam from Baguio, I want to find out where can I buy a, bag, a Baguio ube yam in Cebu. No? So that can be uh, an awareness stage. Now, if, if I am already aware of what I need, and let's say I have a preferred brand, then uh, or if there are several outlets where I can buy it from. So let's say the Baguio ube yam is available in Cebu, but available in three stores or four stores. And a then I have to decide which store should I purchase it from. Maybe I would decide based on price, but that can be narrow-sighted because I have to check also whether the seller is credible or not. No, um, Are they reliable or not? Or um, can they really deliver or not? So that is part of the consideration. Now, if I am favoring a specific store already, no, 
uh, after that search, if I am favoring a specific store that I am more inclined to do business with, then that's the time that I will research the store no? and maybe check if they have been receiving good feedback, um, how long have they been online, um, is there a person or identity where I can attribute the store to. No? If Normally, if it's an established brand, then that's not a problem. But if the brand is so new, more or less, you want to know who is the person behind the brand. Especially if you're buying sensitive items where you want to make sure that what you're buying is original or authentic. It's not expired. And the price is not too good to be true. And I can entrust my money to you because I, because I, want, to, I want to make sure that you will really deliver. No? So all of this form part of what we refer to as the buyer's journey. Now, insofar as the search engine is concerned, you want to make sure that whatever stage the user is in, when they search for information online, you have something on your website that they can um, stumble upon or end up being led to so that they will um, read it and hopefully take it into account no? when making their research and hopefully persuade them to move to towards the buyer's journey and make the purchasing decision on your website. Now, ideally, um, what what is what is usually suggested is that we should mimic the language that our buyer personas would use, no? And uh, affiliate marketers, uh, when they do marketing online, kasi di ba panagbo marketing ka? More often than not, your user don't know what they want, no? Or maybe they know what they want. But they don't know whether they should get it from you or whether they should get the, the product that you are suggesting. So the way to market, ideally, when whether you're marketing through social media, but you also make sure that you communicate this on your website, it must be able to touch on three things. First, identify a problem. Second, you must create content targeting people with that problem. Third, recommend a solution in the content, whether it's your product or service. So meaning, if I am marketing something, I should not just go out and say that uh, buy this uh, Baguio Ube Yam. Um, it's 100% authentic and you can buy three and take one. Now, that would be the lazy way of marketing it. But if I want to be able to resonate with my buyer persona, maybe I would say, um, do you want to buy Baguio Ube Yam, but you cannot go to Baguio, okay? And um, if yes, then we are the solution uh, for you. Order from us and we can deliver to you in two days. So meaning I am targeting people in that situation, those who wants to buy a Baguio Ube Yam but cannot go to Baguio to purchase it, no? So always start your write up or even on social media the way you position yourself by identifying that problem so that whoever gets to read it will check it whether th is this my problem or not of course you will not be able to hit everyone because everyone has their own needs no? and some will not have the problem that you are uh, referring to them but at least for those that you will be able to target because they will be able to relate uh, to the problem that you are presenting, you want to be able to encourage them to do business with you, okay? Now, when when creating, uh, when planning your SEO or your search engine optimization for your e-commerce website, as I said earlier, you have to figure out what is the searcher's intent. Now, when, when we look at the searcher's intent, especially for the case that I mentioned, which is the Baguio Ubiyam, um, you have to make a list of keywords that your buyer personas would search for. So, of course, the, the keywords that you would need to use will more or less um, be synchronized with what you are offering or more or less can be attributed or can, can work for you. You, can, you don't want to target a keyword or a key phrase that does not have anything to do with you. No? So, list, uh, make a list of keywords your buyer persona would search for. And you can expand that list by searching the web for alternatives and determine which keywords people are, are using to find your site and decide which keywords you have the best opportunity to rank for. So, for example, um, now normally if you, would, if, you, if you would do something like this, more or less you, you might be using a Google Sheet. And um, referring to the stages that I mentioned earlier, like... Um, like the buyer's journey, 
uh, think about it. If they are in the awareness stage, what would they be looking for? No, like maybe where to buy ubi yam in Quezon City, or where to buy ubi yam in Cebu, or where to buy ubi yam in Davao. It depends on the situation, uh, especially whichever applies to you. No? And then the moment they enter consider the consideration stage is maybe they would they would search for um, how do I know that how do I know if the Baguio Ubiyam is an authentic brand? Or maybe how do I verify that it is the authentic one and not just something where someone just paste a sticker there and call it a Baguio Ubiyam, but it's not really a Baguio Ubiyam, no? So anything that you that you thought that the person will consider, especially when they're ready to purchase, you put it under consideration. And so far as decision is concerned, anything that would help the user um, to validate um, the information that they have found or that they have thought would be useful for them in order for them to proceed in making that decision, okay? So list of keywords, and then you expand that list by searching the web for alternatives, and then check which keywords people are using to find your site and which keywords you have the best opportunity to rank for. And then we will put that into practice uh, further, no? Um, and then... Um, there are many keyword tools, of course, that you can use, Jerome, and uh, we will be tackling each one of them. Normally, you would try to use several tools because you want to be able to compare um, which one gives you the best content or which one gives you the best result or um, the kind of result that would work best for you, you know, ideally. Now, in targeting your keyword research, of course, it's easy to say na mag-keyword research ka. Ano bang hahanapin ng tao? Of course, the, the kind of keywords that you would come up with will often be confined by uh, what you know. No? And sometimes what we know is very limited because we're, we're limited to what we thought we know or to what we thought the buyer would search for. It's like second-guessing the buyer. So ideally, we need tools or we need some... Uh, how do you call that? Uh, we need some guides, no? So first, um, more often than not, especially for Filipinos and I'm sure for other brands as well, they remember uh, a product based on the brand name. So you think of uh, brand terms, no? Um, even I, I remember when we were in Malaysia, uh, we were planning our meetup event in Malaysia, yung e-commerce startup event, no? We had an e-commerce startup event there last uh, February 2. So, when we got to Malaysia, sabi ko, nako, kailangan natin bumi ng pagkain. So, we were thinking, do we order from Food Panda? Do we go to a nearby store? And then, uh, the venue uh, host suggested that we just purchase pizza. And then, sabi ko, sige, uh, okay sa akin yung pizza. So, for me, parang gusto ko kagad Domino's. Kasi parang yung Shakey's Pizza Hut medyo conventional na for me. So sabi ko gusto ko pepperoni kasi parang yun ang medyo paborito ko pag in-order ko. And then, and since we were in Malaysia and we have a lot of uh, the the primary audience are the locals there, sabi ko we have to make sure that we also have a vegetarian version. And then, um, sige, so sabi ko, sige, try natin Domino's. Sabi ko, para maiba-iba naman, parang yellow cab kasi parang conventional na. And then, she suggested Papa John. Eh, yung Papa John, parang, although naririnig ko siya, pero hindi ako ganun ka, ano sa kanya, no? Pero anyway, nag-search na siya. Parang, I think Papa John nga tayo. Eh. I think tinight na niya Papa John sa Google search. sa Google search. And then, lo and behold, paglabas ng search result, meron kagad advertisement na lumalabas na um, Domino's Pizza promo. So, may, advertis may advertisement kagad na lumabas. You know, we were looking for a competitor of Domino's, but the ad of uh, of Domino appeared. So, so sa balit, sabi masaya ako na lumabas yung ad niya kasi they ended up buying the pizza that I like to purchase in the first place. So, remember the brand terms. So, if you are a new brand, um, it's okay to think about your competitor brands uh, because this is what your customers are familiar with. So, you want to make sure that when you optimize your website, especially when you do advertising, you want to make sure that when people look for these brands, your brand will also appear, no? whether through write-ups of other people or through advertisement. But it's important that you find out who are your competitors to begin with. And then that's that's the first. No? You think about your brand terms. The second term that you have to remember are the product terms, what your product is or does. No? 
Uh, customers looking for these words are still educating themselves about what they want to buy, but might find what they're looking for with your product. So for example, if I don't have a brand preference, especially if I'm in, like in that, in that situation, I was in Malaysia at that time, maybe I would not have thought uh, checking out, although Shakey's would be nice because they're thin crust. Um, pizza Hut, they also have a good pepperoni pizza. Domino's also has a good and pizza and also uh, Papa John. But I was thinking, what, what if uh, I ended up looking for um, the best pepperoni pizza in Kuala Lumpur? So that's another way of looking at it, no? the product term. So in the product term, the customer does not have a preference, but they're looking for the best alternative or the best choice that they can have. So usually for product terms, you go for best terms. So let's say uh, best pepperoni pizza um, in Kuala Lumpur or best pepperoni pizza for parties or best pepperoni pizza for dating or best pepperoni pizza for... Um, I don't know, or for Valentine's Day or something like that, no? So product terms, can, you can perceive it that way. And then, of course, you also have competitor terms. The competitor terms and the brand terms are more or less the same. But, of course, in the brand terms, you'd be looking more at your brand, while in the competitor terms, you would be looking at the brand of your competitors, okay? Um, so that you'll be aware of how they're ranking and how people search for them. Okay. And then you might also want to look for substitute product terms um, and, and see what are the other alternatives out there. For example, if you are selling Ubijam and since Ubijam is not available anywhere, and what are the alternatives for Ubijam that maybe people are looking for? So maybe Ube cake or Ube ice cream. So maybe if someone is looking for Ube ice cream, I would like my ube jam to appear or if i am selling ube ice cream if someone is looking for ube jam maybe i want my ube cake to appear no so these are substitute this this can be applicable uh substitute product terms and then you also have complementary product terms um complementary product terms is where you can be a supplement where do you go best with like for example um if where why would people buy my ube jam Maybe uh, people would buy my ube jam because they're making halo-halo. So if someone is looking for ingredients for halo-halo or where to buy ingredients for halo-halo, maybe I want my ube jam to appear because I know that I would go best with halo-halo. No? Um, so like in my case, since my field is in e-commerce and I'm teaching e-commerce, if somebody wants to learn uh, digital marketing, maybe I would push that they should learn e-commerce too. No? So that is what we refer to as complementary uh, product terms. And then last but not the least are your audience terms. Uh, terms that aren't covered in other categories but might be typical of people you are targeting. Um, uh, ito talagang kailangan medyo mas nag research uh, talaga tayo. No? So for example, um, if I am looking if i don't have a preferred brand and um, more or less i know my product already but i have specific requirements like for example where can i buy where can i buy pepperoni pizza online that can be delivered at night okay or that has 24 hour delivery so maybe the audience terms will be more specific because typically when we look at seo usually our terms are very broad but the moment we go for the audience terms, the audience terms would be more and more specific. Okay, so remember these six: no, the brand terms where your what what your brand is known for, or how do you want your brand to be known for? If your brand name is quite generic, this can be a challenge. No, because if you're generic, ka, then there's a big possibility na baka mahirapan silang hanapin ka, no? Kasi pwede makita yung term mo sa iba. So you have, you, that is something that you have to accept as a challenge, no? Product terms, your, the product category that you belong in, the competitor terms, how would competitors, uh, what are the terms that your competitors are ranking for or how do people look for them? Substitutes for your product, no? And uh, where, what, where, what, kind of products do you complement? Where do you go with best? No? So if you are um, 
if you are a soap brand, if you're marketing uh, organic soap, then maybe organic soap will go well with organic makeup, organic shampoo, um, ano po ba? organic detergent. So even if they are not your competitors, but they are complementary product terms. So you want to make sure that you also appear to them and you get suggested uh, if people are looking for those because they are already sold in those type of product categories. And maybe they already have their organic soap of preference. And hence the reason they're not looking for that anymore. So you want to make sure that you appear so that you will be suggested as an option. no? And your audience terms in general in well, in generic ways or more specifically on how people would search and uh, maybe customize to their condition. All right? So, mapapansin nyo, medyo covered dito yung buyer's journey natin. Yung audience terms, which can be part of awareness. Um, complementary product terms can be part of awareness. So in, in, in fact, in, including maybe for substitute and for competitor terms that can be consideration up to product terms, and then once they reach the idea that maybe they want to consider you, then they would start looking for more specific um, product terms or decision-related content, okay? So let's proceed. So there are many tools that you can use uh, to do your research, no? So we will be looking at uh, most of these tools tonight, and then we will have a specific case study in mind so that we can... Uh, we can study this further. So, kaya yung nagtanong kanina kay Jerome kung ano-ano yung mga tools. Actually, marami. So, nisan, you have to use all of them kasi you want to be able to gain insight as to what they're suggesting at ano yung possible na pwede mo i-explore. No? So, for example, so let's do that. No? So, pag-aralan natin siya. So, let's explore some of our options. And uh, look at them one by one. So let's go first for keyword tool.io. Okay. So let's say, um, meron tayong hinahanap, no? Get 750 plus Google keyword suggestions for free. So I'm going to search for Google Philippines. Uh, let's say, ang hinahanap natin is um, uh, homemade soap, no? Okay, so hanap tayo. Okay, reload down natin. So let's say hanap tayo ng homemade soap. Okay. So homemade soap, nakakita siya ng um, 284 unique keywords from homemade soap recipe, homemade soap business, homemade soap ingredients, homemade soap for dogs, for sale. So, although I have to log in to be able to get all the, the numbers, but even if I don't get the numbers right now, I think I find this interesting already. So, what I can do is I can capture all of these keywords. Pwede ko siya i-copy, export ko siya. Kapos, papasok siya ngayon dun sa aking Google Sheet. No, Remember, uh, sabi natin, kailangan ilagay natin siya sa isang sheet. So, Pag nilagay natin siya sa isang sheet, usually ang gusto natin gawin, uh, nandito yung terms. And then some of the terms will be for awareness, consideration, and then decision. Okay? Remember the buyer's journey. Of course, the buyer's journey will only make sense kung alam mo kung sino yung target market mo. Hindi ka pwedeng gumawa ng buyer's journey type of content kung wala yung target market natin in mind. No? So, let's say, ang target market natin in mind would be uh, uh, mo uh, moms who like to use homemade soap. Okay. So, let's say, yun ang aking target market. Okay. So, pwede ko sabihin ngayon, ano yung possible na concern niya? No? So, syempre, kung naghahanap siya ng homemade soap, pwede sabihin natin, naghahanap siya ng uh, homemade soap for sale. Now, kung hindi pa siya nakakatry ng homemade soap before, baka takot pa siya kung ano ba yung homemade soap. So, gusto niya makakita siguro, paano ba pinipepare yung homemade soap? Not because gusto niyang gawin, pero gusto na niya magkaroon ng idea kung paano ba siya pinipepare. Kasi most of this... Most of these homemade soap have no BFAD registration, no? So you want to make sure that you're dealing with the right people. 
So maybe I'll be interested about the ingredients that they're using. Homemade soap ingredients. And then uh, maybe I would like to uh, have an idea on homemade soap uh, scent ideas. Scent. And then, uh, so tumingin tayo ng ingredients. And then, kung ano pa ang gusto natin dyan. Uh, siguro, tumitingin tayo ng natural, alternative. So, pwedeng... And at this point, pwedeng tumitingin lang tayo ng ideas, no? Pero of course, in reality, hahanap ka talaga ng um, kung ano talaga yung gusto ng customer. So if I'm looking for homemade soap, so sabihin ko, homemade soap, um, siguro, uh, iba uso ngayon, may mga nauso pa nga slimming soap o kaya yung parang nakaka, ano siya, tawag dito, nakakapagpaputi, no? Homemade soap, whitening, for whitening. Um, homemade soap for mature for dry skin and maybe I'm looking for homemade soap um, for sensitive skin homemade soap for kids homemade soap for men maybe uh, Homemade soap for, ano pa bang pwede? Um, ah, homemade soap, let's say, ano na, ano siya? Chocolate scent. Dati may nagbigay sa akin ng ganyan, ha? Homemade soap, chocolate scent. At uh, na-enjoy ko siya, no? Hindi dahil sa parang masarap siyang kainin, pero basta mabango siya, no? And then nakakita na rin ako ng homemade soap na coffee scent. Uh, kasi yung coffee daw, Nagagamit siya for pang tanggal ng, uh, how do you call that? Yung sa skin, yung parang medyo inaano niya. Parang, uh, I don't know the right word to say, no? Basta, uh, basta tinatanggal niya yung old skin, no? Parang exfoliating effect, yan, no? And then, uh, for the consideration, maybe I'll be looking for homemade soap for sale. And then, uh, homemade soap, um online store where to buy homemade soap online uh, best homemade soap for men ito na yung sa awareness pwedeng nagre-research ka pa lang pero kapag pumunta ka na sa consideration pwedeng alam mo na yung gusto mo and hindi ka na magpapaligoy-ligoy pa, no? You wanna know your best alternative. So, pwedeng pagdating dito, ang hinahanap mo na siguro, um, um, best homemade soap for dry skin. Okay? And then, um, popular homemade soap in Manila. Okay? So, kung ano-ano pa yung mga maisip natin. And then, pagdating sa decision, it can be that you have a preferred brand already. So, let's say I have a preferred brand. So, pwedeng dito na ako mag-research dun sa aking uh, delivery. So, let's say, ang pangalan ng brand natin ay Brand X. Brand X, uh, home, homemade soap review. Brand X, Sorry. Homemade soap uh, testimonial. Brand X uh, homemade soap complaints. Um, brand X homemade soap comparison. Okay. So, usually, pag decision content, pwedeng talaga meron na tayong hinahanap na something specific. No? Um, tama, they see, no? exfoliant. No? So, uh, these are examples of how to go about it. Usually, marami tayong may isip na idea. So, ang gusto natin gawin kapag gumagawa tayo ng ganito at kung na-identify natin na mukhang valid sila, we want to make sure na we have content na when people look for them, uh, mahahanap sila, no? Kaya pwede natin balikan yung napag-aralan natin kanina dun sa mga sa search terms. 
So, kailangan may brand, merong product, merong competitor, substitute, complementary, uh, audience terms. No? Um, yung substitute, hindi mo pa masabi kasi pwedeng nag-research ko lang ako. I'm thinking of chocolate, pero depende naman sa anong gusto ko. Scent lang ba hinahamot ko? Or, or meron akong hinahanap na specific benefit kaya ako siya kinukuha. No? So, misa may mga nakikita pa nga tayong uh, homemade, um, homemade uh, soap made of homemade soap uh, with roses with rose petals no halimbawa lagay natin ganyan no so pwede may nakalagay na ganun no eka hold on ha hold on okay so let's continue um so kung ma-determine na natin kung ano yung gusto natin uh, sabi nga natin no kailangan ma-capture natin siya so dahil kulang tayo sa time hindi natin magagawa lahat yan brand term, product terms, competitor terms, substitute terms. Um, so sige, pwedeng pwedeng may malagay tayo no kung sino yung alam nating kilala natin. Uh, product terms, sige, pwede rin tayo may malagay tayo. So competitor, kung alam natin competitor natin, pwede din tayo maglagay. Substitute, well, maybe I'm looking for rose petals, pero may pwede, pero pwede may magsabi rin sa akin Ah, kapag wala kang makita with rose petals, okay na rin kunin mo yung ano, yung sampagita. Okay, for the sake of discussion, no. And then um tapos pwedeng sabihin din nila na um uh, pag wala kang makita ng homemade soap na tama, tawagin mo rin siyang organic soap. Okay? So, ibig sabihin all of the search terms are applied, pero this time, instead of using homemade soap, I will use organic soap. No? Assuming I know the difference between the two. And then, for complementary product items, where does um, where does these search terms uh, appear? No? So, pwedeng for organic, maybe I'm looking for uh, homemade uh, shampoo. Maybe somebody is looking for homemade lotion, homemade uh, conditioner, uh, or homemade liquid soap. And then from there, pwede ko rin isuggest yung aking uh, homemade soap. No? And then, what would be the audience terms? So, pwede lahat ng mga in-indicate ko kanina, parang audience terms siya. Pero hindi mo siya masabing audience terms kasi siyempre, nag-aaral ako, kahit paano, marunong ako mag-SEO, no? So, kailangan masisipin pa natin siya, anong hinahanap ng audience? So, pwede ko sabihin na pag sinabi natin ano yung hinahanap ng audience, either meron na siyang brand in mind, or magpa-play safe siya, kung ano yung best. Hahanapin niya talaga kung ano yung best, no? Um, so, top homemade soap brands in the Philippines. No? Pwede gano'n ang isa-search ko. Para makasiguro ako na okay yung bibilhin ko. And then, that's where I will compare. No? Alright. Now, puto tayo do sa ating mga keyword tool. So, kanina, tinry natin si... Um, KeywordTool.io. So, ayan, may mga binigay siyang suggestions sa atin. No? Pwede ka rin maglagay dito ng negative keywords. Yung mga negative keywords, ito yung mga gusto nating huwag mag-appear. No? So, for example, ayaw natin lalabas yung business unless talagang gusto kong maghanap ng distributor. Kung naghanap ako ng distributor, siguro okay lang. Siguro ayaw ko nung mga naghanap ng recipe. Ayaw ko nung mga naghanap ng procedure. Kasi nagbebenta ako ng soap eh. So, Maybe I'm not really interested in telling people how to make it, no? Uh, making, tapos siguro ang ayoko rin na lumabas yung box dahil hindi naman ako nagbebenta ng box. And then maybe ayoko rin lumabas yung uh, cutter dahil hindi naman ako nagbebenta ng homemade soap cutter, Okay. So, kapag sinave ko na yan, pwede magbago yung results, no? So, yung mga sinabi kong ayaw ko lumabas, hindi ako lalabas. So, itong mga negative keywords na to, uh, nagagamit din natin siya kapag nag-advertise tayo. So, we wanna make sure na 
kapag may naghanap ng homemade soap box, homemade soap cutter, homemade soap making, homemade soap procedures, homemade soap recipes, uh, hindi ako lalabas. Para hindi masayang yung effort ko, especially if I'm paying for advertisements. No? Okay. So, yan siya. Now, another way of uh, doing your research is by similar web. So, ano yung keyword na pinaka-interesting sa inyo insofar as this example is concerned? I, I assume you would agree na um, maybe ang pinaka-interesting dito would be homemade, homemade soap for sale, no? especially if you're buying something. So, tignan natin kung sino yung ranking sa homemade uh, soap for sale. Uh, let's say, uh, so bukang lumalabas talaga, mayroong homemade soap for sale, Philippines. So, may mga lumalabas, no? Nasa OLX. Um, meron lumabas na Soap Central. And then, Soap Artisan Soaps. Okay. Sugami, mga raw materials. So, walang ganun lumalabas na, na brand, no? So, siguro ang gagawin natin, titingin tayo ng past year para kahit paano medyo filtered natin siya. Um, ayan, Soak Artisan Soap. Meron tayong nakita isang brand ngayon na lumabas. And then, sino po ba lumabas? Okay, so lumabas, ang merong brand lang dito ay itong si Soak Artisan Soap. So, ibig sabihin mo, or less naka-optimize siya, no? Yung iba pang mga lumabas, siguro kung wala siyang sariling website, pero naghahanap lang tayo ng soap, pwede tayong tumingin dyan. Now, what does this mean to you? Kung meron ka sariling website at hindi pa nag-ranking yung website mo, one way of being known is um, mag-advertise tayo doon sa mga kiala ng site. So, for example, ito, the soap farm. What's to love about the soap farm? So, soap farm is a brand, pero I guess instead of them having a website, um, they decided na nandito na lang sila sa, ano, sa beauty, manil, beauty MNL. Pero, pwede pa rin natin tingnan si The Soap Farm. Baka naman may sarili siyang website. Meron ba siyang sariling website? Ayun. The Soap Farm EH.net Medyo kakaiba nga lang yung domain name niya, pero mukhang meron naman siya. No? So, okay. So, ito yung, kaya lang medyo blog to, no? Pero I think, I think, seriously, talaga, meron ba tayong makikita ang description? Okay. Ah, talagang picture lang siya, no? Okay. So talaga more of pictures lang siya. Sayang naman, wala silang description. Interesting. Um, sige. So, nakakita tayo ng soak. Tingin pa tayo ng iba. Um, sige. Tingin tayo page 2. Meron pa tayo iba makita. Okay. Ah, Milia. Bat and body wellness. Okay. So, meron ditong bat and body wellness. And then, nakakita rin tayo ng the soap bar. Okay. Tingnan natin yung the soap bar. Talagang vlog lang. Talagang vlog siya, no? Rather than... Sarili niyang website. Okay. So, nakakita tayo ng... Okay, I think they're more of an online store rather than uh, a brand site. So, mukhang si Soap Artisan Soap lang ang ating uh, brand. Okay? So, let's say meron tayong nakitang brand na gumagawa ng homemade soap, kapos may sarili siyang website, no? at uh, may, may mga iba't iba pa siyang binibenta. Gusto natin maintindihan kung paano siya nag-ranking. So, doon natin pwedeng gamitin yung sites na kagaya ng similar web para maintindihan natin kung 
paano nagpe-perform tong uh, website na to. So, ang country rank niya at the moment is 66,269. Uh, maganda ang kanyang traffic. So, ibig sabihin siguro nag-start lang tong website na to mga around August. So, nung November, kahit paano, November, December, pumalo ang traffic niya. Siguro marami rin kasi nagregalo. And then, ngayon, medyo nagsisettle down pa lang siya. Majority ng traffic niya ay from the Philippines. And then, um, limited pa lang yung kanyang visits, but uh, lumalabas dito, marami pumupunta sa kanya directly. Um, majority of the, their visitors find them on social media. Um, yun nga lang, wala pa tayo enough uh, search data sa kanya no? para magkaroon tayo ng idea kung um, paano siya nahahanap ng tao. Alright? So, not at this point. Now, another tool that you can use kapag naghahanap tayo ng keyword, uh, pwede rin tayong tumingin dito. No? Homemade soap for sale. So, si moss.com uh, keyword explorer so, magbibigay din siya ng suggestions niya. Ayan. And I think, pwede natin siya inarrow down. Philippines. Buti nga may ganito na, no? Dati talaga, US lang ang makikita mong data. Pero ngayon, pwede ka na mag-narrow down per country. So, homemade so for sale. At kung titingin tayo ng... Analysis for Philippines. Yan. So, malaki raw ang opportunity. And then, based on analysis, mukhang nag-ranking pa yung mga soaps na nakikita sa eBay. And then, um, pag tumingin tayo ng suggestions, ito yung mga keyword suggestions niya. Homemade soap for sale. Yung nga na may mga data pang hindi naglo-load, no? So, kailangan natin mamili. And then, pwede tayo magmili kung anong, course, anong sources ang hinahanap natin, no? So, pwede mix of sources, keywords with all of the query terms, based on closely related topics, pwede tayo mag-group. And then, pwede tayo maghanap, humarap din ng specific volume. Kung SERP analysis naman, makikita natin kung ano yung mga websites na nag-ranking for, for those keywords para we can analyze them further. Surprisingly, may mga lumabas dito sa result niya. No? Like itong Debbie's Handmade uh, Soap. Wala to kanina eh. No? Pero dito meron. I'm not so sure kung Philippines siya. I guess pwede natin siyang tignan kung sa Philippines siya. Um... A Wild Soap Bar. Okay. Tingnan natin kung Philippines siya. So, tingnan natin sila. Uy! Ano yun? May buntong hininga. Kinabahan ako rin ah. <laughs> oh, mamaya ako nung lumabas. Alright. Okay, mukhang foreign brand sila, no? Rather than local brand. Pero I love the texture. At saka yung presentation, may pagka uh, mukha siyang uh, raw. Yeah, sabi nga nila, no? So, anyway, so hindi siya yung target market, hindi siya yung target natin. But of course, as you know, um, since we can now buy anything from abroad and have it shipped to the Philippines for as long as they are less than 10,000 pesos, no taxes, then who knows, no? People might be buying from them, no? And then, meron pa siyang keyword list. Ah, kailangan natin mag-sign up ng trial para magamit natin siya. Okay? Now, another tool that you can use is uh, answerthepublic.com. So, ganun ulit. Tan natin yung homemade soap.com. Ay, homemade soap. And then maybe um, punta natin country. Okay. Obviously, walang Philippines. So, US na lang muna. And then, get questions.
Okay, there are supposed to be 80 questions, pero I assume hindi pa lang naglo-load sa screen ko. So, dapat... Ayan. May visualization kasi. So, si Answer the Public, ang maganda sa kanya, ang pinapakita niya sa'yo questions. So, dahil question siya, um, parang binibigyan ka ng idea kung what do people look for. So, gaya nito, where to buy... Uh, where to buy natural homemade soap? Where can you sell homemade soap? Where can I buy handmade soap? Where to find handmade soap? Where to cure? Where to store? Where to buy ingredients? Where to buy supplies? Where to sell? Tapos, best recipe? Talaga, best homemade soap for car wash. At kung ano-ano pa, no? So, ito, ang maganda sa kanya, puro, ang binibigyan niya sa'yo, based on the keyword that you provided, um, ano yung tinatanong ng tao? No? So, ang challenge mo is for you to um, come up with content for the, to provide the answer. Okay? Tapos, ano pa yung mga preposition? Homemade soap without glycerin. I think, kaya yata yung iba ayaw ng glycerin. Yung ba yung pampabula? Yung glycerin. No? So, homemade soap without borax. Homemade soap without olive oil. Lalo na kung if you're allergic to certain um, ingredients or you want to avoid certain chemicals. So, yun. Kaya merong without. So, kung tutusin, maganda to, no? Kasi, like, yung gumagawa tayo kanina ng worksheet natin, um, napaka-generic, eh. Hindi pa natin pinag-usapan yung without. Ano yung ayaw ng tao? So, it depends on the situation, no? So, ito naman, isa, yung merong with, no? So, Homemade soap with rose petals, mukha na gets natin siya kanina. Pero ito pa yung mga hinahanap ng tao. And then, homemade soap similar to Dove. Homemade soap uh, to sell. To get rid of, ano yan, fleas. I guess, maybe yun nung to get rid of eczema, etc., etc., etc. And then, may, may alphabetical. Among others. So, actually, kung naghahanap ka ng ideas to write about, um, o kaya ano yung, ano yung, paano yung positioning ng content, I would suggest you use the platform answerthepublic.com to come up with ideas. Okay? Now, if you are advertising, of course, the more popular platform would be like Google AdWords, no? So, pwede kang maghanap dito. Um... Let's say the type natin, homemade soap. And then, uh, ano yung mga negative keywords natin kanina? Ano yung negative keywords ko kanina? Remember, sabi ko ayoko ng box. Um, ayoko rin ng cutter. Ayoko ng ingredients. Recipe. Box, cutter, ingredients, recipe. Alam ko, meron pa ako sinabing isa kanina eh. Oh, anyway. Sige, save. And then, um, yeah. Sige, tingnan natin kung anong lalabas. Get ideas. Okay. Hindi rin siya makapagbigay sa akin ng ano. Pero, for now, sinabi niya, na low, low daw ang competition and then the average monthly searches uh, for the Philippines is 100 to 1,000 ang naghahanap ng homemade soap sa Philippines. 100 to 1,000. Competition is low, meaning walang nag advertise for these keywords. So, ibig sabihin, kung mag advertise ako at gagamitin ko yung homemade soap at lalabas ako sa search engine result, then, ibig sabihin, pwedeng lumabas kagad ako, no? So, ibig sabihin, pa may nag-search dito, homemade soap. Oh. Gaya nito, ito ibig niya sabihin, wala nag advertise Okay? Yun ang ibig sabihin ng low ang competition. So, ibig sabihin, if you have a website, in-advertise mo siya sa Google search. Pag may naghanap ng homemade soap, lalabas yung ad mo. Wala kang kalaban. Ikaw ang lalabas lang mag-isa dyan. No? Kasi wala kang kalaban. Okay? Um, for the Philippines yun, no? I'm referring to the Philippines. 
Alright. So, balik na tayo sa presentation natin. Mukhang, baka mag-overtime na ako. Now, some tips uh, bago tayo mag-wrap up ng ating session. So, if you want to do SEO for an e-commerce website, please remember, uh, it is suggested that you use HTTPS. No? Ibig sabihin, naka-SSL siya o naka-secure socket layer yung website natin kasi kapag may e-commerce website ka, kapos hindi ka secured, uh, hindi ka mag-ranking sa search engine results. Most likely, hindi ka appear sa page 1. Kasi as much as possible, Google only wants to recommend uh, secured websites. So, pag sinabi natin naka-HTTPS ka, yan yung, um, yung nakikita natin sa mga websites ngayon na may padlock. Sorry. So, pag sinabi natin may padlock siya, um, gaya ito, wala tong padlock, no? Pero, I think yung Beauty Manila yata kanina meron. Yung nakita natin the soap farm. Okay, so, ito, secured siya. Yan. Ito yung sabi natin secured, no? So, makikita nyo to um, secured siya, no? So, naka-HTTPS siya. So, kapag e-commerce website ka at nagbebenta ka ng products online at uh, tumatanggap ka ng payment, nagpo-process ka ng order, ideally, you need to have a secured website kasi nagsasubmit ng information yung tao sa website mo and it gets transmitted online. Alright? And then, add unique content to your category pages kasi usually yung mga websites natin meron silang tinatawag na categories so pag sinabi natin may category siya halimbawa um, kagaya nung tutat tinig na naman natin si ano eto gaya to category siya hair care shampoo no so shampoo uh, is a category okay so under siya ng hair care so if you click on hair care by its own so hair care is a category so, mapapansin nyo sa Beauty Manila, beautymnl.com, yung category nyo ng hair care, meron na siyang content. Healthy hair frames your face and expresses your unique look, so it's must to keep your tresses in tip-top shape. No? So, if you're looking for uh, something to cleanse your hair, and then you click on cleanse, mapapansin nyo, yan yung cleanse category, tapos, eto na, no? yung cleanse niya, may sariin na naman siyang write-up. So, ibig sabihin, kada category, kada subcategory, meron siyang unique write-up. Okay? So, yun yung sinasabi natin, kailangan natin merong um, unique content sa ating website. Per page, per category page, per subcategory page, ideally, meron siya dapat na unique content. Okay? Um, and add your unique selling proposition to your content pages. So, pag sinabi natin, kailangan natin mag-add ng uh, unique selling prop uh, proposition, like ito, 2016 Beauty Awards winner, uh, Beach Burn uh, Sea Salt Spray. So, um, add volume to your natural length. So, napansin nyo, um, the way they wrote their product, no? So, ito yung product, ba? Price, review, and then mapansin nyo, uh, meron siyang what to love. So, para siya sabi niya, what makes this product interesting for other people? So, claim to fame, why is this product sikat? It's an all-natural sea salt infused spray for beach waves. Fast facts, what are you known for? Add volume to your natural length, texturizes hair for perfect waves, help keeps curls longer, maybe use as a dry shampoo to refresh hair on the go. Ba? Dry shampoo, ah, talaga. Pag sinabi nga tan dry shampoo, yan yung ilalagay mo na lang sa hair mo, di ba? Yung ba yun? <laughs> Parang leave on, no? And creating, perfect for creating natural looking body and bounce. So, ibig sabihin, they did not use any technical terms, uh, but with the way they describe their uh, products, no? Mas madali siyang uh, tandaan, no? So, so we have our face, lips, uh, makeup na yun, skincare. So, asa na yung mga soap? Body, soap. Okay. Yeah, let's go for soaps. Um, kanina meron tayong nakitang homemade soap. So, halimbawa, gusto natin si ano, Sino mo mukhang interesting dito? Sige, si ano, si olive oil. All right? So, ganun din siya, no? It follows the same 
process, yung what to love, no? naka-focus sila in answering the question, what to love about this product. Okay? So, mapapansin nyo, kada category niya, um, kada category niya, may, prod, may write-up, kada subcategory may write-up, and then kada product may write-up. Okay? So, that's part of an, parang yan yung parang pinaka- SEO approach niya. No? And if you remember, for those of you who attended the E-Commerce Entrepreneur Summit in Manila and Baguio, uh, Glenn Dimandal talked about this in detail kasi na-involved din sila sa pag seo ng uh, Beauty M&L. No? Okay. So, just uh, please don't forget, uh, make sure that you create unique and accurate page titles for your website. So, usually, kung hard-coded siya, yan yung nakikita natin sa loob ng title tags natin. And uh, make sure that you also have useful description and web address because yung description natin, yan yung nakikita natin sa search engine results that describes, um, that gives more information about the website. No? And then when working on your product descriptions, ito yung mga suggestions. No? So dapat yung product name at yung secondary keywords natin, gumagamit tayo ng H2 header. Okay. Um, kung gumagamit ka ng mga CMS, hindi mo na dapat i-worry yan. Pero kung hard code mo yan, yun, yun ang ideal. And then make sure that you have an introductory paragraph um, about the product. Uh, meron tayong list of features, so we can put that in a bullet list. And then meron tayong closing paragraph. Now, kung tihinan nyo yung ginawa ni Beauty M&L, mas nakafocus siya dun sa uh, what to love first, kapos yung mga other other information about the product, I think nakalagay na rin siya dun sa site. No? So, as mat, ikaw ang bahala mag-decide kung paano mo ipi-play. Pero tandaan natin lagi na as much as possible, we make this friendly to the user at huwag tayo maging technical when describing our products. No? You can also add a closing paragraph and you can also add a product video if applicable. Pero mas maganda sana kung may product video kasi alam mo naman ng mga tao, very visual. So, if you only have a product with a box, so malaking factor yung packaging kasi kung malalagay ka sa isang online store, kapos magtatabi-tabi yung packaging mo, kung yung product mo walang packaging, naka-plastic lang siya. Kapos yung mga katabi mong product, naka-packaging na maayos, talo ka na, no? Kasi doon pa lang, pwede mahusgahan ka na. So, sometimes, if if what you lack in terms of packaging, pwede mo daanin sa video how you explain your products, how do you use it, and testimonials from people that have tried your product. And also, compress product images. Use standard sizes. Um, if you notice, not nina nati si Beauty M&L kanina, um, the way they post their product images, pare-pareho siya ng sizes. No? So, kung gumagamit kayo ng Canva, uh, pwedeng, pwedeng ganun ang gawin nyo. Kasi misan, kadalasan, lalo na kung nagmamadali tayo when updating our website, the moment we get hold of a product, a product picture, we upload it right away. So, ideally, you should know what is the optimum size of the platform that you're using and then edit ka sa Canva, gawa ka ng frame, kapos drag mo dun yung product para you will observe the product, the proper product size. So, bago mo i-upload yung picture sa website, kailangan naka-proper product size na siya and make sure that you use the, how do you call that, um, the right file name for your picture, no? Para... Halimbawa, kung ikakopy ko yung image address ng olive oil soap, ito ang lalabas. No? Okay. So, ideally, kung ano yung pangalan ng brand natin, pwedeng all, ano to, pangalan nito, moisturize, be organic, bath and body, moisturizing olive oil soap. So, most likely, I want to be able to capture the name of the brand and the name of the product in my description, in my file name. No? And siguro sa alt tags pa niya. Para, para makasigurado na properly optimized siya. Okay? Now, also remember, if you have a blog, you should add your blog on your e-commerce site. There is a tendency for people to separate their blog from their e-commerce website. Um, maybe because you want to make sure that your traffic does not get uh, convoluted. Tama ba yung term ko? Uh, parang nami-mix up mo yung traffic mo, no? Pero, kung tutusin, you can also integrate it kasi if you can drive traffic to your blog because you have interesting content, your online store can also benefit from it. So, rather than separating your blog from your website, uh, from your e-commerce website, it's best that if you integrate them because it can also help in terms of SEO. 
And then, of course, last but not the least, uh, generate a sitemap of your website and submit it to Google Search Console for indexing. Uh, with Google Search Console, you'll be able to upload your um, a file, uh, usually a, TX, a sitemap.txt file that lists down all the pages on your website. If you're using platforms like WordPress, Magento, among others, they have plugins that can help you do the food do these things uh, in an automated manner where hindi na siya ganun ka, ka burdensome sa'yo. No? All you need to do is just log in and connect it and everything, and it will take care of itself. No? But if you have to do it manually, then uh, find out how to do it manually. But if you want to be guided, uh, what you can do is uh, read about it. You can do a Google a search on Google Search Console, or this, is for, you sh this was first known as the Google Webmaster Tools, um, and then, magtu pwede kanyang turuan kung ano yung mga dapat mong gawin uh, pagdating sa website mo. No? So, if you go there, at sasabihin niya sa'yo, bibigyan ka niya ng report kung may problem ba ang site mo, among others, para kung kailangan siya i-fix, well, mapifix mo siya. No? Since nilagay na natin siya dyan, i-add ko na siya dito para kung makalimutan. Okay? So, I think I have mine here. Uh, okay. So, sasabihin niya sa iyo kung may crawl errors ka, kung meron ba na index, kung meron mga warnings, you will know. Um, and then, pwede ka rin yung bigyan ng idea on your traffic, um, sino yung mga, ano yung mga links to your website, kung meron, ka, kung meron mga mga links, no? And then, uh, kung na-index ba siya ng maayos, no? makikita mo rin, okay? Among other things. And you can also test if your website is mobile friendly. You just uh, go to the mobile friendly test tool of Google and search. Kasi kapag hindi mobile friendly ang e-commerce website mo, makaka-affect din siya sa ranking, sa search engine result. And there are also a lot of tools that you can use to test your website for mobile friendliness. Remember that half, or and it will reach the point that more than half of people going to your website will come from a mobile device. Although we have options of installing apps on our mobile device, but by default, people will not be using them because people don't know that they exist. So you have to make sure that you can be found on the, on the Google search and your website will load properly on Google search. Um, and if you want to test your speed, you can go also go to Google Speed Test and uh, type the URL of your website and test the speed of your website. And uh, make sure also that uh, when you do your online marketing promotion for your website, you strongly build on your brand because you want to be able to reach a stage in the future where people have a high recall on your website na parang i-refer ka na lang, pupuntahan ka ng tao rather than you relying on search and social for traffic on your website. No? And then, um, although mas hindi-discuss na natin to later on, pero pwede ka rin magkaroon ng tiyatawag nating link strategy para, para tumaas ang ranking mo sa search engine results. So you have to decide what keywords do you want to rank in search engine results. Di ba marami tayong mga keywords? And then you want to be able to decide as well um, ano yung approach na gagawin mo. Of course, you can have videos if you have products that that are meant to be used, lalo na kung sabon yan, you have to use it on your body, uh, on your body, on your hair. So, depende, where, where, where can it be used? So, you want to be able to demonstrate it or maybe explain how to use the product. No? Um, you can also do tactical initiatives and uh, reach out to bloggers. No? If you want to reach out to bloggers, what you can do is... Uh, Talk to bloggers who have a uh, blog about uh, similar products. So, for example, if you're looking for homemade soap, uh, for say, homemade soap uh, Philippines. And then, I what I can do is that um, if I am not ranking yet, I could contact bloggers who have written something about it. For example, how to make homemade dishwashing soap in the Philippines, written by Happy Pinay that happypinaymommy.com. So if there are a lot of bloggers that I can reach out to, I can also use yung ginawa natin dito and then decide kung who, do, who do I want to reach out to. So for example, makita natin si um, ano yung URL niya? Happy Happy 
pinaymommy.com. Pero you know, pag nag-search pala ako, usually I also go for the past year. Kasi minsan, you want to work kasi with with bloggers who are active, no? Kasi minsan may mga nag-rank pero hindi na pala sila active. So you want to make sure that you talk to people who are active. So, meron tayong nakita dito. O siya talaga, happypinaymommy.com. Sige. happypinaymommy.com. Okay, maganda ranking niya, no? 8,894, so she must be very active. So that means I can reach out to her and uh, and, and explore reaching out to her if I want to promote my soap. And then I can also check out other blogs. Um, the humble homemaker.com. Okay, the humbledhomemaker.com and then, yeah, mukhang, mukhang blog siya, no? the humbledhomemaker.com. Ang haba ng URL, no? Pero sige. So, pwede natin siya ilagay. Uh, competitor, ang definition ko sa kanya kasi para lang for the sake of comparison, no? So, mukhang si the humbledhomemaker.com, mukhang bago pa lang siya, no? At, uh, mas less ang traffic niya in comparison kay happypinaymommy.com but nevertheless um at least I'm aware no so usually when also when scouting for bloggers when looking for bloggers and when people recommend bloggers to me so ito rin ang ginagamit ko para ma-analyze ko yung blogger kasi at the end of the day yeah they can say a lot of things about themselves they can be articulate and all but of course bottom line lang naman diyan eh may traffic ka ba no kahit na anong bongga mo sa social media kung wala naman nagbabasa ng blog mo wala rin di ba so pagdating sa mga e-commerce entrepreneurs hindi tayo basta-basta nagpapasilaw sa um what bloggers say about themselves so importante rin ano talaga yung lumalabas sa search engine results Uh, about them. No? Sometimes it's not about the traffic per se or the ranking, but uh, more or less, um, kasi pwedeng hindi ganun kataas ang traffic mo, pero dahil credible ka, you rank in search engine results. Yun ang tandaan natin. The, the search engine result is not really an indicator that if you appear, mataas na traffic mo. Pero if you, if you rank in search engine results, then it means what you're publishing is quality content. And... Uh, at ito, maybe nakakatulong siya to validate things further. Pero at the end of the day, para sa akin, kung lumalabas ka sa search engine result, bongga ka. No? Sabihin, if Google loves you, then I must love you too. Parang ganun lang yun, no? Okay. Okay. Um, so normally, what what we work on if we want to appear if we want to improve ranking in search engine results we have to grow domain authority of our website so the longer your domain name is the better so take care of your brand take care of your domain make sure that you grow in social email and word of mouth channels if you grow through word of mouth then uh, people will less rely on other channels to get to you and um, rank in competitive uh, keywords of your niche Publish regular content, and that's the reason why we're doing all of these uh, free webinars because it's our way of publishing more content and uh, earn links and shares from people. And of course, you can also build credible links from a lot of places out there. If you are location specific, like you're catering to a specific country or to a specific city, then you can also register, especially if you have a, a physical space. No? And uh, lastly, I just want to talk about the search advertising options. However, I guess para mas madali ko siya ma-explain, puto lang tayo dun sa website ni uh, Google, no? Para mas madali natin siyang maipaliwanan. So, kung tutusin sa Google, when you advertise, um, uh, you use AdWords, no? And usually AdWords allow, what makes AdWords interesting is that similar to Facebook, um, you only pay for what you get. Um, and But ang difference lang is that sa Facebook kasi when you advertise, when people see you, it's not because they really need you, it's more because you targeted them. Like for example, if I know someone who likes soap, I would advertise so that people who like soap will see my ad. Pero it doesn't mean that you have a need for them. 
But in Google, uh, Google AdWords, specifically for search ads, when people find you on search, there's a high likelihood that that person has a need, no? Kasi hindi naman siya mag-search sa Google kung wala siyang hinahanap. Therefore, kung yung ads mo will be able to target those who are in need, then there's a bigger possibility that you can have a conversion, okay? So, if you visit the website at adwords.google.com, uh, you'll be able to see more info. So, so you can advertise through search. So, pagka search ka, yung lalabas ka sa Google search engine results, you can also appear on display ads. Ito yung mga pwedeng dumabas ka sa newspaper at ito yung mga banner images na nakikita natin sa website. Your ads can also appear on YouTube. If you created a YouTube ad, like let's say a one-minute ad, if a person watches your ad for less than 30 seconds, you will not pay for the ad. I think you will only start paying for the ad if a person sees your ad for at least 30 seconds, if I recall it uh, correctly. And you can also appear on mobile apps. And uh, of course, you can also promote your app. No? And then you can also be uh, targeted. Like, uh, for example, if you are based in Cebu and you only want to target people who are in Cebu at that time, you can reach out to specific locations. Your ads can also have um, call features so that people can call you uh, and accept phone calls. No, um, I think the phone call feature yata nag work pa lang siya sa Metro Manila. And then uh, you can also see your statistics regularly. You can also tie this into your Google Analytics so that you would see from keywords uh, which san galing yung traffic mo, no? uh, whether from search ba siya or from ad siya. And then you can also tweak your ads regularly if you want. You can also control the budget that you will spend for your ad. No? So for search ads, um, you can appear on the on Google search engine results, and then and they can see it from the desktop through mobile and through uh, uh, through the tablet. Now, if you notice, most Google search ads today are are like this, no? Meron lang siyang green. Now, if the keyword is quite competitive, more often than not, you will see four ads first before the actual. Uh, before the actual content. Kaya kung tutusin, kapag bago ka, maganda rin talaga mag-advertise. Okay? And then for display ads, um, of course, you would see them in banner ad formats. And um, it can also appear on Gmail. Now, nakakakita, nakakita na ba kayo ng ads sa uh, Gmail? You, usually, when you open your Gmail email, of course, you're reading your email. But the moment you start reading promotional emails, yung mga galing sa social media, galing sa friends mo, uh, meron na rin mga lumalabas na ads sa Gmail. In fact, they're one of the cheapest uh, today. So if you want your ads to appear directly on the inbox of a person, you can run display ads para magrun siya sa Gmail. And of course, you can also make your ads appear on mobile apps uh, by using uh, display ads as well. Okay? All right. Um, Apart from sa search ads, usually we look for search keywords for people to for people to um, target their ads depending on what people are looking for. Uh, for display ads, you can also look into affinity. Uh, you can also look into uh, uh, items where they are classified in or where they are. Uh, interested in, no? para mag-appear din doon yung ads mo. And then, sa display ads, you can also target websites. Kasi ang search ads, sa uh, search engine results ka lang lalabas, pero kapag display ads, you can appear on the websites of your choice. Like, for example, your, you want your ad to appear on Sunstar, on Inquirer. If they are displaying uh, Google ads, then pwede mong i-target din doon. But of course, you have to be realistic on the budget. no? And then, there's also the video ad. Uh, video ad, if you want to uh, appear on YouTube search engine results, uh, YouTube videos, I mean. So, pwedeng mag-appear ka inside the YouTube video or you would appear on a YouTube page, yung mga nakikita natin sidebar ads or pwede rin namang uh, suggested uh, ads ka. No? And then, there's also app ads and yung mga application ads naman or sometimes we refer to them as mobile ads also. Ito yung kapag gusto mong uh, lalabas ka for specific apps, no? 
All right. So normally when we do uh, search ads, it depends on what we want to achieve. Although the goals can be similar to social media, you can increase online purchases by making people go to your website or it can be location based to get people to your door or it can be phone calls if you want to drive people uh, to visit your to call you no among other things so i would suggest if you want to try it out you can go to adwords.google.com and um, and start exploring on how to create your ad today i think that typical budget would be around 50 pesos and there are many tools that you can use. There uh, are customer match tools, keyword planner, display planner, among other things, para tulungan kayo makapagplan para sa inyong advertisement. And of course, you can also tap the service of a certified Google AdWords professional. Like in my case, I'm certified in uh, search, display, uh, shopping, mobile, and video. And there are a lot of uh, certified professionals nowadays also that can help you in uh, managing your campaigns. All right. So that is our topic for this session, which focuses on SEO for your e-commerce website. So at this point, we would like to um, accommodate any questions that you may have.